I'm Garrison. And I'm Neil. And our goal today is to show you the problems with our current Federal Reserve system and the solution, which is simply to make the Federal Reserve more federal. We'd like to start off our presentation today with a quote from Thomas Jefferson, who once said, to preserve our independence, we must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. We must make our choice between economy and liberty or profusion and servitude. I place economy among the first and most important virtues and public debt as the greatest of dangers to be feared. It is incumbent on every gener generation to pay its debts as it goes. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issuance of their currency, first by inflation and then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of all their property until their children will wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. Now, we would like you to keep this quote in mind as we go on with our presentation and to actively check whether or not Jefferson's predictions were true. You may find the results surprising. To explain our presentation, we first need to introduce a few key terms. The first term is fiat money. Fiat means let it be so in Latin. And fiat money is money that has value only because of government regulation or law. This means it is not backed up and is worthless without the U.S. government's authority. The second point we'd like to introduce is a concept called fractional reserve banking. Fractional reserve banking is a system where banks only maintain a fraction of the loans that they give to, uh, a only re maintains reserves that are, are a fraction of the customer's deposits. This allows banks to loan more money than they have currently in their system. They can create money out of thin air through this. And all these concepts are controlled by one agency in the United States. And that is the Federal Reserve System. The Federal Reserve System has the sole power to print money whenever it feels like to get the U.S. out of its fiscal problems. However, the problem is that they are completely private and not actually controlled by the U.S. government. To understand the problems that we have now, we now like to look to history. We feel that by looking through the history, we can show you some of the inherent flaws with some of these concepts. Now, the first paper money was created in the 10th century, and it had what paper money should have been. It was the goal of paper money back then was to represent a certain valuable commodity that was stored elsewhere, just an easier way to transport your valuable goods. However, then banks started printing slits of paper called IOUs, which were basically certificates of paper that entailed the receiver that the bank owed them a certain amount of money. The banks did not necessarily have this amount of money in store, creating debt. Now, we'd like to explain how the Federal Reserve System came to be in America. It came to be in America at the beginning of the United States with, Jeff with Hamilton and the Federalists. The Federalists argued that in order to secure our stability, we needed a Federal Reserve System. This first attempt, however, only lasted for 20 years. It was quick, quickly replaced, but repealed in 1836 by Andrew Jackson. Between 1836 and 1913, there was no Federal Reserve System, and every dollar was backed by some kind of precious commodity. During this time period, with the exception of the Civil War, America saw its greatest increases in stability of the markets. The inflation saw increasing in buying power, and, it never, and the economy was far more stable than it's been since then. In 1913, a group of bankers, including J.P. Morgan and J.D. Rockefeller, along with President Woodrow Wilson, created the third and current attempt at the Federal Reserve System. They decided that the key to keeping the Federal Reserve System alive is privacy. Therefore, they named it the Federal Reserve. However, the Federal Reserve is about as federal as Federal Express. They are a completely private bank, and the U.S. has no authority to check and determine what they do. So although you can see some of the problems already through the history, we're going to now show you the, the direct problems with some of these concepts. So let's start off with fiat money. Fiat money is problematic because, again, without the U.S. government's authority, the money is worthless. It is not backed up. up. This basically means that the value of your money is in the hands of a third party. And although the Federal Reserve may have had several successes, it has also had several failures, as Garrison will explain. Our Federal Reserve system that controls our fiat money is the sole creator and manipulator of the U.S. currency. They are able to create money, charge interest, and basically do whatever they feel is necessary to stabilize the economy. They receive interest throughout the system, and the people end up with the bill. They can create money out of thin air, and the U.S. government has no regulatory authority to determine what they do. Now, 
the concept that controls the Federal Reserve System and the concept that the Federal Reserve System uses is fractional reserve banking. And fractional reserve banking is problematic because it creates a vicious cycle of business where each step of the way, your money is devalued. But we'll go on to that later on because it is the, one of the most important points in our de uh, presentation today. This devaluation of currency leads us to the topic of inflation. Now, inflation is the biggest impact we would like you all to get out of today's presentation. This is the main problem that w which we have with the current concepts in our Federal Reserve System today. So, how do these concepts cause inflation? Again, back to fiat money. When the Federal Reserve prints money out of thin air with n without backing it up, they're causing inflation. Because although there's more paper money in circulation, there's a fixed amount of gold in the reserve. This means that now each dollar is worth less. So all your hard-earned money is now devalued. The Federal Reserve that causes our inflation, they get money from the Treasury. They then take that money and loan it, loan 10 times that amount to the banks at interest. The banks then loan 10 times that amount to the people at additional interest. Through this system, more money is inflated, the value, become, the value of the dollar becomes worth less and less, and the people get charged more and more inf inflation. It causes bubbles. Bubbles happen because the, pr the value and the price of products and services increase, and the value of salaries and uh, people's money decreases. So for people to be able to afford the things they previously could afford, they have to return to the banks for additional loans. This causes the, do value the dollar to lose even more value and for the people to have to pay even more interest. Eventually, this interest and devalued dollar catches up to them when the bubble pops. Some of you may be thinking that this can't be true, that inflation cannot be a, a huge problem of our current Federal Reserve System. However, this next chart shows you the inflation rates of the U.S. from 1910 to 1990, as it says. As you can see, for the majority of the U.S. Uh, of this time period, the U.S. has had inflation. Each year where there is inflation, the value of your money has decreased. Through this next chart, we're going to show you how the U.S. inflationary rates compares to the inflationary rates of other countries. This chart here shows that up until 2005, and this trend is still continuing, that the U.S. inflation rates have been increasing compared to these other four top countries. What we'll end up seeing eventually is that the U.S. currency will be devalued to an extent to where these other currencies pass them. If we allow for this to happen, it can allow for a change where the U.S. dollar is not the world global currency, not the most valued currency. It's moving toward a system where maybe the euro is the commodity that everyone seeks rather than the U.S. dollar. So through this system, we seek to not allow for other countries' currencies to become worth more than ours. The problem that Garrison just mentioned is completely true. This next chart shows you the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar. As you can see, from 1910 onwards, which is when the last attempt of the Federal Reserve System, our current Federal Reserve System, was created, the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar has decreased exponentially until it's reaching what it was 5% of what it was worth before. But also, as you can see from 1830 to 1910, when there was no central bank, the, U the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar stayed stable, sometimes even increasing than what it was before. It is this stability that we set to seek out. We seek to avoid this. Fractional reserve banking is what causes the majority of our inflation. They are able to create money out of thin air and receive money from it. And in turn, they are a private bank. The system that they use now has ended up making the United States government indebted to themselves. The, the Federal Reserve owns $1.6 trillion of the U.S. national debt. We have to pay interest on that debt. So in turn, the U.S. government created the agency that now owes it money. So now the U.S. is paying money to the agency they created to stabilize the currency. Now, through this system here is how federal, fractional reserve banking causes inflation. First, the Federal Reserve goes to the U.S. Mint and Treasury who issues the, uh, the currency to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve then loans 10 times the amount of money the Treasury gave to them at 10% interest to the banks. The banks and corporations then loan 10 times that amount of money to the people for additional interest. As we said earlier, this causes the bubbles where the people's value, dollar values are significantly lower as the money flows through the pyramid. This causes uh, inflated prices and eventually bubbles. 
This next picture shows you more in detail the, the pyramid that Garrison just described. As you can see, there are several steps along the way where your money is constantly being devalued and not backed up. By the time it reaches the people, the money can possibly be worthless, not being backed up even 10% of what it was. This chart is confusing. This chart does not make sense to the majority of people. This chart barely makes sense to me and Neil. This is not the system that we need to be using. We need a system where the people can understand and the people can trust that their, monetary, uh, that their money is being taken care of and that the money that is being manipulated by the government is in their best interest. We need a system where the people can know that their dollar will stay, be, stay stable and that it will create a great business climate. We need it, them to be able to know that their monetary policy will not cause bubbles and, infl and uh, recessions. They need to have a currency where they can trust that it will grow their business steadily. So, what is the solution? The solution is a sound currency, as Garrison just described. A sound currency would have several positive impacts in America. For one thing, it would relieve the $1.6 trillion of our debt today that's caused by the Federal Reserve. It would also allow for a stable currency so that you know that your money is not being devalued when you take it out from the bank or when it flows down that chart of people as we just showed you. Also, it would provide a great environment for businesses because businesses would not have to worry about whether there will be another recession or another economic dip or whether their money is not backed up. And it would eliminate those vicious bubbles that Garrison has gone into depth about, which are a huge impact of a sound currency. And lastly, it would eliminate the vicious cycle that's caused by fractional reserve banking, where each step of the way, your money is devalued. This means, this also entails that there would be no bubbles, and also means that there will be fewer bank runs, the famous bank runs that we know and we hate through different recessions, because banks will be able to provide you what the money that you've loaned out, what they've loaned out. So how does this affect you? This affects every American. Because this is your currency. This is the currency that you worked for. We need to stop allowing for a third party to manipulate and take away the value of the currency that you worked hard for. This is your money, so we have to fight for it. A lot of you in the audience may be thinking this doesn't affect, you, affect me because you may be students. But students, even we need to worry about our current fiscal problems. Because as the next generation, it is likely that we will have to take on the debt that is being produced by the current generation, and we'll have to solve it ourselves before we can even think about uh, moving forward or succeeding in our own ways. We'll have to take care of this debt. So if we want to avoid this, we need to show that the current generation that you cannot keep putting this debt on us. And that means that you must fix the current Federal Reserve System. Though we cannot vote, we can help share and help people learn the problems that are facing our economy now. We need to understand that this business cycle is very hard on the people and that it's going to continue to get worse unless we act now. We need to ensure that the monetary policy of the United States is in the best interest of the people. We need to make it to where the business cycle does not negatively affect people, other businesses around them. We need a currency that can stabilize growth and ensure that America will remain great. And that is what makes our presentation an idea worth sharing. So let's make the Federal Reserve more federal. Thank you.